So today I wanted to start right here, in one of the simulations available in Space Engine. This is the Ring Nebula, one of many many different planetary nebulas inside our own galaxy. They were named planetary nebula hundreds of years ago, because from a distance they do sort of resemble bright spherical objects, sort of similar to planets. But unfortunately the name stuck. Even though now we know that these are actually gas clouds, produced by various stars very similar to our Sun, as they reach the end of their lifetime and become white dwarfs. With the emissions then become invisible, because the white dwarfs are so hot and produce so much ionizing radiation, that all of this ends up ionizing the gas and creating effects similar to a typical halogen lamp. And so, pretty much all of the stars, approximately 1 to 8 solar masses, are going to form these unusual structures. And that of course includes our Sun. The Sun is most likely going to become one of these as well, billions of years in the future. And so unlike hundreds of years ago, today astronomers understand these objects pretty well. Or so we thought. Hello oh, wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this unusual mystery that was discovered approximately a decade ago, that has now been officially confirmed, with the mystery in this case not really making sense just yet. But it's a mystery in regards to the alignment of these planetary nebula in the Milky Way galaxy. Because it turns out that, for some reason, the vast majority of them seem to be aligned in a very certain direction. Specifically the nebula that often form unusual bipolar shapes. But what's really unusual here is something that becomes apparent if you look at many of them at the same time. For some reason, many of them seem to be directly aligned on some imaginary axis that actually does not make sense right now. And since here we kind of expect all of these objects to have alignment in random directions, why exactly they seem to be pointed in the same way is of course that mystery we're going to be discussing today. But first, a very important clarification. This does not affect all planetary nebula. So for example the one I showed you previously, the ring nebula, does not actually have any bipolar shapes and so it's not going to be affected by this at all. Here's actually the real picture from the Hubble telescope, and so even though there is a bit of a stretch in two directions, the actual shape is still more or less spherical. But other examples like the Cat's Eye Nebula definitely show more sidedness with very pronounced directions. And so today the assumption is that any star that's singular is most likely going to form some kind of a spherical object, whereas a binary system is probably going to end up with something a little bit more stretched and something containing what's known as bipolarity, kind of resembling two separate jets aimed at opposite directions. But here it's also important to remember that all of this happens really quickly. These objects very often last for just a few thousand years, slowly disappearing as the white dwarf cools down and as the gas disperses. And so after approximately 10 to 50 thousand years, pretty much most of this would be invisible. Nevertheless, because there are so many stars similar to our sun that have reached the end of their lifetime, our galaxy will constantly be getting more and more of these objects as many stars evolve and reach the end of their lifetime. But back in 2011, by studying new images from the Hubble telescope, something unusual was discovered about these bipolar nebula. Quite a lot of them had their long axes aligned with the galactic plane, basically entirely parallel to it. And so if this is the galactic plane right here, almost every single one of these bipolar nebula was almost parallel to it. This was originally discovered back in 2011 by Brian Rees and created a pretty big mystery. But because this was not an official study and was actually his PhD thesis, and also because this was a pretty big assumption, it took years and years of analysis and additional pictures to finally definitively confirm that this is indeed what's happening here, with what's known as 5 sigma confirmation. Basically this is very very likely to be true but only affecting certain types of planetary nebula, which is why it was important to find out what possible mechanisms could be responsible for all of this. But the thing is, even today, the actual evolution of shapes inside these nebula is still not very well understood. There's actually a video in the description that goes a little bit more through this, but in a nutshell, it's still not super clear how some of these nebula get exact shapes. What is clear though, is the effect from having a partner star. What is clear is that partner stars very often produce very specific effects, with the main discovery being in regards to the types of binaries that seem to form these alignments. It seems to only happen to stars with very tight orbits. In other words, if you have a star orbiting another star relatively close to one another, 
As one of them goes through its nebula stage, it has a very high chance of developing these unusual structures. And not just bipolar structures, but bipolar structures with a very certain alignment. Whereas binary stars with much larger separation, or singular stars, do not produce similar effects. They will produce bipolar nebula, but they're not going to produce alignment with the galactic plane. At least that's the main conclusion from the paper so far. But the question is, why? What's actually happening here, and why a certain nebula aligned, others not? In short, the current explanation involves magnetic fields. But to be more specific, it's the effects from the magnetic fields when the stars are still forming. We've discussed magnetic fields in galaxies in some of the previous videos, you can find some in the description below. But in a nutshell, we know galaxies have magnetic fields. Some galaxies seem to have much stronger fields than others. Whereas for the Milky Way galaxy, today the fields are not very strong, but they could have been strong billions of years ago, especially when the galaxy was more active. And though these fields generally do not affect stars, they do affect gas that circulates in a galaxy and that then creates new stars. And so, in order to have such an unusually neat alignment, all of these binary stars would have to be created pointed in a very similar way. Basically, billions of years ago, something would have to align all of this gas in a very certain way in order to then form stars pointed in the same direction, with that something very likely being magnetic lines of the galaxy. The lines that today resemble something like this, and the lines that are still guiding all of this gas, making it orbit around the galaxy in a very certain way. Here's actually what all of this would look like if we could see it, coming from a slightly different galaxy with more powerful magnetic fields. And so based on these observations from other galaxies, we can actually assume that, at some point, the Milky Way galaxy very likely had these powerful magnetic fields as well. And they would have been powerful enough to align the gas to then form stars in a very certain way. Which in essence would lock all of this gas before it even starts forming stars into a very certain motion following a very certain path. With stars orbiting very close to one another, almost directly aligned along those lines. Whereas singular stars, or stars on a much farther orbit, not really affected by this as much. With these effects particularly visible extremely close to the galactic bulge in the center of the galaxy, where we do expect much stronger lines and of course much stronger magnetic effects. And this also implies one thing. Some stars, especially binary stars, might actually have a slightly different formation history, which results in a very different alignment. In other words, they might have been created in a different environment from slightly different molecular gas or slightly different star nurseries. And because these nebula also enrich Milky Way galaxy with a lot of different elements, it of course all relates to the idea of evolution of galaxies. It might actually help us solve the mysteries of Milky Way evolution. But more importantly, by studying the direction of these nebula, we can also now start studying the magnetic lines in the galactic bulge which at some point might help scientists map the magnetic environment right at the center of the galaxy. But that's of course if the assumption is correct, if this is indeed caused by magnetic lines, and if this is all a result of formation of tight binaries in the early galaxy. There might be some explanations in the future, but at least for now, it's the only one we have. Although in this case, it only involved 136 planetary nebula in the Milky Way galaxy, so once we actually have more details using hundreds and thousands of other nebula known to us, there might be more discoveries and more clarification. At least for now, this is a pretty cool discovery. Definitely a mystery that nobody expected, and definitely a mystery that's going to be talked about in years to come. And so until those future discoveries, or until we learn something else, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.